Hey guys, welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Earth Asunder, and we're doing the two-player starter box set, Battle of New Chicago. In Earth Asunder, you're going to be playing as one of two different armies on a board that is also going to be changed depending on the ways you want to play the game. You'll have your own little tile pieces that you can add to the board, as well as 26 different figures for each of the two different armies that come inside the box. The game is a tactical style game in which you're going to take your turn, summoning different monsters or characters with your summoner as well as then moving your summoner and whatnot uh, across the board to try and defeat your opponent's summoner. It's a simple game that's similar to games like Warhammer and other tactics style games that involve uh, basically a little bit of die rolling but mainly going to be straight up combat and tactics style fighting. The game is going to consist of rounds that are going to be played out throughout the game until one summoner is defeated and when that happens the other summoner is going to be the winner of the game. Anyway that's the idea of Earth Asunder. Let's go ahead and take a look at the board and everything included in the game. So here we have the game Earth Asunder and everything that's going to be included in the two-player starter box for Battle of New Chicago. As you can see here, it's going to come with a ton of different miniatures and a lot of them are unique involving uh, different ways they're going to be fighting. Some of them are going to be with swords, others are going to be with arrows, you actually have players with guns as well, and then you'll have things like demons and angels and whatnot that could be included as well. These are the tiles on the board that can be changing the way the game is going to be played based on how they're placed by each of the players, and then there's going to be these crystal nodes which can increase the amount of power or and, uh, resources you gain throughout the game that will be allowing you to summon different monsters. Every player is going to start with one summoner and then of course their team which are going to be shown on these cards here that also show their abilities and a little bit of flavor text and then a chart down here which delivers everything you need to know about uh, that specific character, how much health they have, power and movement. They also have some die here which you'll be using to see who the first player of the game is and for the most part this game is going to be based on tactical knowledge and uh, just simply attacking their opponent and dealing damage to them and simply removing them. If you can remove that summoner, you're going to win the game. It comes with a box, the board, and it comes with this rule book as well. And uh, you have these little things down here which will uh, show you which characters are whose by simply placing the uh, miniatures on top of them just like that. That's pretty much what you're going to get in the game Earth Asunder. All right, let's talk about how you're going to be setting up, what characters you're going to be using, and how the beginning of the game works. And then we'll come back down here again and I will show you how a couple rounds of play are, are made. So to begin the game, you're going to want to have something that represents health chits as as well as utilizing these die for your power and to see who goes first. You're also going to get one of two different armies in the starter set. Now there are more armies in the game if you don't want to just pick up the starter set that you can pick up some other stuff as well and that will give you the option of I think up to four armies. But these are all the cards you're going to get with one of the armies and of course it's going to come with your summoner as well as some unique characters which can only be summoned once per game and then your common characters which are basically your fodder that you can be using on the board. You can only have six of the same common character on the board at any given time. Uh, to start the game off, you're also going to place the crystal nodes down, and you're also going to get uh, three to five of these uh, terrain pieces for each side of the board for each player to be placing on their side of the board. You'll be utilizing those in order to block line of sight and to specifically, specifically change the way the game is going to be played on this board every single time you play. All the different characters are all unique, and they all represent a card that's going to represent their health and show all their different stats and whatnot. And uh, once you've gone ahead and done that, you're going to place your character down in one of the first rows. They'll do the same with place your different terrain down and then you're going to be able to start your turn and on your turn you're going to get six energy you'll be able to move and then attack your characters uh, with your characters and you'll also be able to utilize either spells or attacks now so summoner is able to do special things that most of the characters aren't so i went ahead to the game earth asunder for two players as you can see and on the board it says player one and player two uh, I, these are all the different obstacles you're going to get so i went ahead and set five on each side of each players as well as these uh different rift nodes here now the starting of the game is pretty simple each player is then is going to roll a d6 and to determine who's going to get to go first. Player two will determine how many rift nodes, which are these guys here, are going to be in play, whether it's just one or whether it is three or whether it's all five. Now, you're always going to have equal if you can on each uh, side of the board. And then after that is done, player one is going to summon his summoner and put it anywhere on the first uh, row of the board on his side. So he could summon this guy here and place it here, along with summoning the nodes one uh, up to five. So one, two, we'll just place three, four, we'll do five there. Then the next player is also going to do the same thing, one, two, three, four, and five, as well as taking their summoner and placing it on the board somewhere in their position. After that is done, 
uh, the game is going to begin and player one is going to start the game. And how you start is simply by gathering resources or power. You're going to get six resources as well as a plus two for each summoner next to one of these crystal nodes. If your opponent already has control of it, you don't get to gain the power for it. And if you have multiple summoners and multiple nodes, you can gain two for each of them. But in general, you'll be getting six. And with this six, you're going to be able to utilize uh, summoning different creatures. And these are all the creatures he's going to get on his side. And then on the other player, side it's going to be over here and what they do and everything is going to be written right there on the card as well as on the back of the card is going to be a helpful explanation for each of the different abilities so you don't have to look it up in the rule book which is really nice and it also has a certain summoning cost all of the white is going to indicate the cost of the creature and how much it's going to cost to summon and it's going to be summoned adjacent unless it has recon which means it can be summoned up to three spaces away so if i wanted to summon this guy here this one eye he would cost me five which would lower this down to one and then i could bring this character out adjacent to my player and simply put them right there. I went ahead and placed all the different uh color pieces that way you can tell the difference between the different players and also what's interesting about these characters is they have a little notch indicating the front facing of the character because attacking from the front and from behind does make a difference in the game specifically with certain abilities after that is done he's got he can go ahead and choose to move if he wants one two and uh well, two. He can move two. It tells you his movement and his attack as well as his health. Then he's going to end his turn. He can't summon anything else unless it's going to cost one. I guess he could summon one of these uh, broad swordsmen, which he, he won't. The next player is going to get to go. He's going to go ahead and get six. But what's also interesting with this is the second player is going to get an additional two to start the game off. Only for the first round, though. This character can move three. One, two, and three. And then face any direction they want. And then they can go ahead and summon characters as well. Maybe they'll summon this Mercurial, which they can put it right here, and that's going to cost them two and maybe they want to summon a skulk which will cost them two more putting them to four and uh, after that he could choose to summon more he could choose to save it if he wants to go ahead and save what he's got here the next player is then going to get to go uh one and two and let's go ahead and summon something else because he's going to be at seven now six and one let's see right there yep and he's going to want to get to one of these nodes here because then he's going to start getting the ability to uh, generate power. Uh, so let's go ahead and summon something big. How about this guy right here? This is Captain O'Neill. Captain O'Neill is really cool. Uh, he's, he's going to cost six. However, what Captain O'Neill does, if you go ahead and look at this thing here, is it says he's got cleave and war cry. Well, he's also got five health, two movement, and two attack. His cleave is going to do 180 in, in, in the direction in front of him, and his war cry is one of two different things he can do, whether it be shielding his allies or what does the other one here say? Um, get enraged. So he can give his allies enraged. That's pretty sweet as well. When you first summon a unit, you can't you can't move them or attack with them, but afterwards, the next turn, you can. And then, of course, he's got his sniper over here, or one eye, and they can move two. Now, whenever you're moving a character that has a range attack, and if you move and then shoot, that is going to reduce their attack by one. Unless they have something like quick trigger, which is going to allow them to move first and then attack, it will not then subtract any costs to them. And that's the basic idea of the game. They're going to be moving around the board. Now, let's go ahead and just move ahead head in time here with the characters so these guys are all up here and then these guys let's say they're over here and let's go ahead and say that it is now once again uh, this player's turn the first player's turn just so you get an idea of how it works so we've got uh We've got Captain O'Neill over here, and he can go ahead and move two spaces. Now, it's not going to get him into cleaving distance, which is where he's going to want to be, but he can simply move over here, and then he can turn, and he's going to be able to do his cleave damage. He'll be able to attack. So when he attacks, it's simple. He just looks at his attack and hits the character who it's on, and then they're going to lose a health. This character here has two health, so he's only going to take one damage. And I have these little markers here to represent damage. You can use dice or whatever you want. And after that, these guys will have the opportunity to strike back, which will do one damage damage to Captain, and Captain is still just fine because he's got uh, five health, so he's got a lot of health going on. Uh, this Ranger here has a range of four, so he can go one and two, or one, two, and three, and he can target somebody. He's going to go ahead and hit this guy up here in front, which is, of course, our... Uh, our summoner so he's going to go shoot for two and that's going to do two damage directly to the summoner and the summoner is not going to be able to attack back because the summoner doesn't have a ranged ability but the summoners do have some special abilities uh, and then of course you can move his main character up 
and his captain has his block, his reach, and his charge. Let's go ahead and look at what charge does. So charge is going to say once per game, he can unleash a mighty rally cry and all friendly characters are granted plus one to their movement for the turn. So he's not gonna need to do that because he can just be brought in here. He's got his holy circle and his shield and whatnot and regenerate. It's gonna be able to give him the ability to uh, heal himself and do other cool stuff. But for, for now, he's just going to simply swing and he's gonna go ahead and hit this guy here, this skulk. He only has one health. So when he hits them for two, this character is just gonna be removed from the board. And as you can see, the objective is to destroy one of your opponent's summoners. Um, on this player's turn, of course, they're going to get their resources, and they're also then going to be able to summon any units, but the units cannot simply attack to start the game off with. Um, and also, this character is going to do some cool stuff. He can do something like a shadow step, which he can slide uh, around the opponent, regardless of whether they're there or not, and simply attack the back. If he does that, he does his own damage, which will be two to the commander, as well as two more double damage for striking behind the back of an opponent. That does reduce his health down to five points. So that's a really cool thing you can do. Uh, she also has an ultimate ability that lets all of her characters simply shadow step just like she did. Um, and of course, she can keep summoning units if she wants. She can summon, uh, this guy's too much. The Skulk can come back into play. Maybe she wants to protect herself from the sniper, putting him right there for two. And maybe one more to summon the Venom. So they're trying to cover this command commander up. And that's the idea of the game. Each character, like I said, has special abilities. This character here is a unique and it has an arcanist and it can channel. And if you look on the back, it'll tell you what they do. If you're attacking, you can choose to do an arcane ability or you can choose to do your uh, basic physical damage. And the different arcane abilities are going to have a certain cost for the summoner, but on the back of these cards here, if they have a cost, it will. Otherwise, it's going to be a free cost. Things like Needle, which will do a damage and has four range. Purge, which removes all uh, nasty uh, things targeting characters. And Shock, which can hit somebody for two and then hit their uh, ally that's adjacent to them for two for one. So that's kind of useful as well. And that's the basics uh, basics of the game. Other thing is, of course, uh, on the start of his next turn, he's going to gain six plus two because he's next to one of these spaces here. And that crystal is going to give him additional power, which will generate him, of course, his six. And he already had one. Uh, but it'll also give him two more, which will put him to three. So that is important to note as well. These characters only have once per game abilities. And once they're used up, that's it. And if their health ever goes down to zero, that's also game over as well. And of course, there's a ton of other abilities, but you get the idea. It has the tactics, it has placement of these different runes here, these different trees, and then how they move around the board in their own unique way as well. Anyway, let's come up and I'll tell you what I think about the game and any other little nuances that I have to talk about for Earth Asunder. All right, so a couple caveats before we start the review. The first thing is these little crystal things here you can share them but the max you can get is two per crystal per arcanist and or summoner that is next to it so if you have two summoners next to one that's only going to net you two additional power however if you have one summoner next to each of these two it'll net you four and the max you can have with five crystals on the board is 10 additional power and you can of course uh, you can share the uh, crystals with other players but only one per another thing is line of sight line of sight is going to affect uh, you're going to be able to t have line of sight provided one portion of your hex hits another with a straight line and if you can do that that will be line of sight and to count to do it you're going to be counting so if you have four spaces you go one two three and four okay you are now in range of that and most other movement abilities are going to function the same way as targeting does and like i said before if you can bring your opponent's summoner down to zero that is it the last thing to note is there are unique characters in the game like this guy here who's got the big cleave the captain or the general if he dies, you cannot resummon him. Uniques can only be played once per game, and once they are removed from the game, they are gone for good. You can still summon original units or common units, and you can have up to six on the board of the same unit type. That being said, that's the basic idea of Earth Asunder. So what do I think about this? Well, this is the starter set of a two-player game that is a tactical game, right? Most players have played a tactical game that are watching my video reviews, and you know how they're done. It's stuff like Encantress and whatnot. This is played on a board as opposed to hexes, which is going to basically give you a flat square space, which may entice you or may unentice you. That'll be up to you based on if you like boards on tactics like Aegis, or if you like something like Encantress, which is the simple hex tiles that you place down. Uh, the these things here, I don't know if they're going to be miniatures or not, but they're basically going to be line of sight trees. Those are kind of interesting. It gives you a little bit of play as to how the board is going to be. There are trees on the board, but that, those don't affect line of sight, which I don't know, kind of is, is a little weird, I suppose, because you're like, oh, this is a tree, but it's actually part of the board, but this is a tree and it's a token. So this is where you're going to not have to worry about, this is where you have to worry about line of sight as opposed to the other trees on the board. There are a lot of character abilities. For instance, you look at one of these characters here. This one is Venon. She has a poison ability. 
and it tells you on the back of the card what the ability is, which is really nice. Another really cool aspect of the game is it has a little notch that shows you the front facing aspect of the miniature, which is cool. All the miniatures are pretty unique and interesting in their own way. And you've got uh, the matriarch leader, which is going to be Jaris Devere. And then you're going to have the uh, general for it looks like the uh, religious army called Cardinal Garrod Tarn. And uh, Garrod Tarn's army, there's multiple armies, but we only have two. Garrod's army is more of a physical brute force with regenerate. And uh, of course, the matriarch is going to be more ranged, spellcastery type. And I think it's almost fully fully women in the specific army, which is pretty sweet. Uh, it gives you a lot of diverse character selection that you can have. Um, all the artwork is uh, interesting. I mean, a lot of it I, I like, a lot of the artwork. Um, some of it might be, for some people might be a little too revealing, but uh, personally, I don't have a problem with it. Um, I, I usually judge by the my, my wife, and she says it's, it's okay, then it's okay, because my opinion on the artwork as far as just aesthetically pleasing, which it is for me, is all I base it on. You don't use dice a lot in this game, it's simply simple tactics, which is basically going to be, I'm gonna do two damage here, one damage here. There's no defense rolls like Warhammer, so it's just simply you're gonna take the damage or you're not. Sometimes you can deal a lot of damage and some abilities are much better than others, but at the cost of a higher amount of spell power. Um, one thing I would say is, the amount of spell power you get per round is, is pretty intense. You can get quite a bit. Uh, and that might be, maybe it's because we played with multiple nodes most of the games. Maybe if I played with less or only one in the middle, it would have been more costing. But I felt like I always had enough spell power. And I thought it would be kind of cool if I had like a very limited amount for the game. Um, overall, it's a fun little tactical game. It doesn't prevent, pre it doesn't give you a whole lot of new interesting aspects for tactics, but that's also probably because it's a starter set, so it may have some things that come out in the future that can change the game as it's played. It does feel basically like I'm playing Final Fantasy Tactics on a board as far as that goes, moving my characters around, simply attacking, and then ending my turn, and my opponent doing the same thing. It's got, of course, the ability to change the game a little bit with the train and whatnot, but for a starter set, it's a pretty fun game. I enjoy the I enjoy this game for what it is. Uh, some people would say it's probably a little just just a little too simple, not enough in innovation in the game, I suppose. And others are probably going to be enamored by the artwork, the nice, nice miniatures. These are prototype miniatures, and they're excellent miniatures. Or the fact that it's got some nice positioning, a lot of different abilities, and it's very easy to use. This, this is going to be, for people who want to get into Warhammer, but it's too complex and too crazy, to try and try something that's a little more simple. It's got just enough for you to play two players right up here, and if you want to continue going, they're going to have extra armies for you. Overall, it's up to you. For me, it's a solid little tactical game. It'll see play once in a while here, but I've got a lot of tactical games that are very similar to this. And so, unless I get some other additional packs and see what they do in the future as far as that's go, um, they'll probably come out once in a while. Overall, excellent artwork, great uh, styling, great gameplay, nice flow, uh, but nothing super, super innovative. All right, that's what I got. All right, guys, thanks for taking a look at my review for Earth Asunder, the starter set for two players. If this is interesting to you, go ahead and take a look on the Kickstarter down below in the description, and you can go ahead and check it out. Like I said, there's probably gonna be multiple things. I've seen the site, and I read the rules on both, just to get a good idea of the game, and they came with additional armies. In fact, there are some cool Kickstarter exclusive things that I've been checking out as well, and we played with those, which provide a little bit more uh, additional abilities, which makes the game a little more fun, regenerate something that I, can, I got to play with that, as well as, well, I won't spoil it for you. You can go ahead and check in the Kickstarter campaign yourself. But if you like tactics games, go for it. As well as checking out unfilteredgamer.com. Tons of blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. And don't forget to go ahead and check out everythingboardgames.com, the giveaway geek. They got tons of great giveaways, even better than my own site. We're giving away some games up on the website tonight. So if you're interested, right now we're going to be putting some uh, new giveaways up for you guys to take a look at. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to waging war in the arena with you next time.